Welcome everybody, this is How to English Teach and Learn with Gavin M. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. Try that again. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. There we go. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. Off to a strong start there, Gav. That wasn't too bad, and at least there are no background noises this time, Em. It's nice and clear and quiet. That's true. We are very thankful. Em, it's episode three of Gavin M's How to English podcast. Already episode three. This year is flying, zooming. Talking to Zoom. Do you ever get students just turning pink on Zoom? Em, I don't use Zoom. What is Zoom? You don't know what Zoom is? Oh, Zoom is like an online video conferencing app. Yeah, I've had a couple of students just turn pink. Yeah, they're sitting there normally and then all of a sudden pink mode. Pink? You mean their faces go pink? or The whole screen is just shades of pink. That sounds absolutely delightful. It is. You never know quite when it's going to happen or why. But it's lovely when it does. It is literally like seeing the world through rose-coloured glasses. <laughs> can they see themselves in pink? They can. Everybody can see. That's lovely. Yeah, it is. Now, I don't have anything like that that I can recall, specifically with online platforms, people changing colours. <laughs> you would remember, I think, if it happens. I do get a little bit seasick when I see people moving around and the camera follows them. They have those really super duper cameras sometimes, don't they, that auto focuses and their kind of background comes and goes into focus and their faces change shape a little bit. Yeah, that's quite distracting. Mm. And I've had to this week apologise to some of my students because I too have been rocking from side to side. Side to side? Why is that? Because I've been practising using a treadmill at the same time as teaching. That sounds complicated and perhaps a little dangerous. I think it's okay. I did check with one of the health and safety students that I have and they said, please be careful, but I am careful. (laughs) It's a great opportunity for me to do a little bit of exercise and just walk while teaching. You're talking about online lessons. You can get a bit of exercise at the same time. I'm sure I could do this face-to-face as well. We could all get on our treadmills (laughs) or bicycles or something. Well, that could be a good business model. Come and get fit and learn English at the same time. Work out with Gav. It's quite hard to keep a conversation going, though. I noticed that. I did have to stop a few times to get my breath back. (laughs) But it was certainly lots of fun. That's fantastic. Slightly unusual, but that is amazing. I can just about talk, think, write, sit down at the same time, let alone move, walk, focus, balance. Mm. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to think about, but it is a good opportunity to get a few kilometres in if you're in the mood. Em, this fits perfectly with my first topic for today. What's that, Gav? Is it okay to do other things while teaching and learning? Huh. For the teacher? And the learner. Because this is Teach and Learn with Gav and Em. Well, it depends, I suppose, on what you're doing, like you've explained. Well, I gave you quite a good example at the beginning. There may be other things that you might want to do. I made a very small list. I'll just quickly tell you some of the other things I've done while teaching. Right. For example, listen to music. Mm. Writing emails. You haven't. And WhatsApps. You haven't? Really? Read. I've read quite a bit, actually. But then it's usually connected to the lesson. So my student says, I'm really into and then put whatever you want in the space. Mm. And as they're describing it to me, I often read about it just to make sure they're using the correct language to describe it. I've done that before, just to get some background information, just so you know what you're going to talk about. But I usually say, hang on, I'm just having a quick look. I don't tend to do it surreptitiously, but can we go back to emailing? Yes. What reason have you got to email while you're in a lesson? Well, while they're talking, I might want to just contact somebody and say, I'm sorry, you can't attend the lesson in an hour. Hopefully see you next week or thanks for your email. I'd like to order two dozen, please. Not connected to the lesson you're teaching. (laughs) Not like a student who said, I can't come and you're just writing back. Because sometimes I write, you know, in the chat or something. If they've written, I can't attend. But I'm sorry to say, Gav, I think that's a no-no. That one's a no-no. I think so. 
Yeah. Right. What about baking? Is that okay? Could be great for a lesson if you're going through some sort of recipe and the method. Wouldn't it be great the students could follow along and bake whatever you were baking? Well, they can follow along, but I'm not sure they can also bake because they're quite often in their offices. Yeah, that's what I mean. If they were working from home or something, that would be nice. But I tend to just focus on the lesson, I'll be honest. I might maybe just do a little doodling or something on a page, but very, very rarely. I'm usually very in the moment and focused on what's going on. How about doing the washing up? Never, no, no. Washing. Housework. Housework, I think you're going to just listen. Fill the dishwasher. Housework. Well, the reason I thought of this is because one of my students had the dishwasher going on in the background and I said, wow, that's a very loud noise. What is it? Is there an aeroplane landing in your back garden? <laughs> and she said, no, it's the dishwasher. Is that okay? And I said, yeah, of course it is. I thought it was a bit distracting. Right. Well, a lot of people who work from home are trying to get chores done at the same time, aren't they? Yeah. I suppose there's a difference between actively participating in another activity mm. while teaching. And you say that's a big no-no for you. It is. I mean, Monday I said, how are you? They said, fine, how are you? And I said, I'm a bit annoyed because my washing machine's just finished and now I've got to sit here for 90 minutes and wait for it. <laughs> like, oh, no. I can't get my washing out. Oh, that's terrible. But your way would just be... Hi, everyone. I'm just putting my washing out right now. Um, didn't... Follow me. I've done it. I've just grabbed the laptop, said, come on, guys, let's go down there. Yeah, this is the hall. We're going into the kitchen. Let me show you. This is my bread. It's been proving for an hour. It's time for me to put it in the oven, etc., etc. So you just incorporate it into a house tour with lots of vocab and maybe conversation. There's lots of opportunities that come from it. I say, why don't you tell me a bit about your kitchen? What appliances do you have? Students seem very keen to share this information with me. Maybe as a one-off, but I think on a regular basis, they might think, no, that's just Gav exploiting us. <laughs> no, <laughs> not exploiting us, but... I'm multitasking, Em. Good. Good for you. <laughs> okay. Gav, I've had a couple of things this week where I've thought, what would Gav do? What would Gav do? This is our new feature, isn't it? I think it might be turning into a feature because I often do think, what would Gav do? So first thing was... Um, lay it on me. Yeah. First thing was I sent some emails after a lesson with all the materials from the lesson that I usually do, the worksheets and the audio or whatever, and one of the students wasn't present, so I got an auto-reply. So you sent homework after the lesson... To the students. Yeah, and one of the students wasn't present in that lesson that day and I got an auto-reply. Em, um, can I stop you there? Yeah. This is very interesting because I'm of two minds. Do you know what I mean when I say I'm of two minds? I think that means you're not quite decided what's right or not right. Precisely. I don't know if the student doesn't attend the lesson, should I send the homework? Oh, I always do. I'm a bit worried the student might receive it and think, I don't know how to do this homework because I didn't attend M's lesson, for yeah, example. Yeah, but that's still there for them. If they want to try, give it a go. Obviously, they know they've got some gaps if they weren't in the lesson. But yeah, I always send it. Just... So it's a kind of punishment then? No. No, it's inclusive. It's like, you weren't there, but we're still thinking of you. You're in my mind. Okay. You're part of the course. That is very true. That's very kind. All right, please continue. Well, anyway, I got an auto reply that said, thank you for your massage. Unfortunately, I am unavailable, blah, blah, blah. And so, did you massage this student? That's just getting this out of the way. There was no massage involved. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, no. So what would you do? I mean, there's three students in the group. The student that I got the auto reply from is the weakest student in the class, and he's not that confident. Can I tell you what I would do? That's what I'm asking, yes. Press reply and then highlight the incorrect word, type the correct word, again highlighted in a different colour, and send it back to them. That is what I did, Gav. But it's nice to know that is what you would do. That's exactly what I would do. I would answer straight away, and I usually do check things like spelling, or I think a typical mistake is... Dear ladies and gentlemen. That's true. He had fight. written, actually, Madam and Sir, but I decided not to go for that. I decided to you know, fight one battle at a time. So I did that. I did toy with the idea of saying it in the lesson, but I think that would have been a bit humiliating. Well, I would use the next lesson, if that student attends, as a good opportunity to say, OK, everyone, 
this week we're going to do auto replies. What have you got? And you've given that student a week to fix the problem. That's quite nice. And then they can feel quite superior if they come up with something really good. Mm. Maybe. But that's that's good to know. I like that question then. Have you got a second question? I have. Another one. Student is always getting mixed up with Saturday and Sunday. Is it the same student? No. No, no. Different student. But she's always mixed them up. And whenever she says Saturday, I have to check. Are you sure it's Saturday? The day after Friday? Blah, blah, blah. So what would you do, Gav, in this situation? Have you got any ideas how to help the student remember? Practice days of the week? Just in the order they come. Probably. Or I might try some triggery type words and do some practice that way. What's triggery type words? Well, it's a technical term for um, using words that are connected with other words so that you sort of picture things. Can we have an example? Yes. So what did you do on Saturday in that chair, M? OK, like I sat on Saturday. On the sofa, you... Sat. Yeah, exactly. So you sat on Saturday... But do you remember it was a really nice day on Sunday? Yeah. Do you remember when you opened the curtains, you looked out the window and there was a bright yellow... Sun. And it's often sunny on a Sunday. I agree. That's a good way to remember the words, but it's not so much of a way to remember the order of the days. So what I came up with well, that you haven't said yet, M, give me a chance, Okay. was... No, go on. What, what do you want to say? I was just going to say it does work because I have a student who confuses Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. And I say to my students, remember Tuesday is the second day. What's another way of saying second after one? Two. 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 Tuesday. 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 That works because it's in the order of the right word. Yeah. Well, it's a, again, it's a trigger word. It's a kind of like okay. two is the second day, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, that's nice. Shall I tell you now what I did? Em, tell me what you did. Came to me. It came to me in a lightning flash in the moment. I didn't have to think like... Was it like a bolt of lightning? It was like, it came to me in a bolt of lightning. A comes... Flash of lightning. A comes before you. A comes before you. Saturday and Sunday. The A in Saturday comes before the U in Sunday. Yeah. In the alphabet. That's right. That's nice. And I she can't called... say it works for me personally. Why not? It's totally <laughs> obvious. Saturday, it? Sunday. One is first, the other is second. And she called it a donkey bridge. Do you know what that is? I don't know what a donkey bridge is, Em. She's from Germany, so it's a way of remembering, like you've just said, with the sat in the chair and the sun thing. But in German, they call it a donkey bridge, which I didn't know. Donkey bridge. Okay, so you created a donkey bridge for her to remember the days of the weekend. I did, and I told her to forget about the phrase donkey bridge, because as far as I know it... Have you ever heard of that, Gav? I haven't heard of donkey bridge, Em. Is it an English word? Can you actually... Can you just Google it? I'll have a look on my Ecosia search page. Okay. Uh, Donkey bridge in the Urban Dictionary is a mental tool to make a connection between one idea and another. Specifically Mm. for ideas that only a donkey would need help remembering. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. But it does say there's a lot of German translations here, so I'm... I don't think it's well known in English. I certainly have never heard it before. I haven't heard of it, but I like it. I like it too. So there we go. There are some other donkey bridges while we're on the topic, Em. A-E-I-O-U, our vowel sounds, and letters like Y and X. You can create so many triggers for these. Like what? So I, like you point to yourself and you say, I, I am Gav, I Yeah, I usually say I like iPhone. I think it's more ubiquitous. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) And for example, the letter Y, and I just put up my hands and my shoulders and say, why? Why? But you look like a W when you do that. That's true. Because your head's in the middle. But if you have them higher, maybe, yeah. (laughs) And X, as in ex-wife, ex-husband, (laughs) ex-boss. Students seem to remember that. Right, but that does start with E, but okay. We're triggering him. We're, we're creating the donkey bridges memory patterns. Mm-hmm. E, like email, that's usually quite good. There you go. So there's plenty of them. You're right about the vowels. Those are always the tricky ones to remember. They are. Gav, would you like a tea? Em, you know I only drink coffee. Oh, yeah. Well, 
I think that could be arranged. Oh? Followers, if you enjoy listening, watching or reading Gavin M's How to English Pod, visit coffee.com forward slash how to English pod. That's coffee, K-O dash F-I dot com forward slash how to English pod. And it would be lovely if you bought us a tea or a coffee to show us support. You could even get a mention on our show if you'd like. Um, on a different topic this week, I encountered something which I seldom, rarely, hardly ever come across. Mm-hmm. My student was talking about their boss and she said, my boss is a f- and I can't stand listening to that. <laughs> that was my reaction. Are you serious? I just kind of paused and went, um, okay. I thought, wow, that was some really good swearing. Okay. So this is my question. <laughs> what would M do? What would M do? <laughs> is it okay to swear in your English lessons? Oh, yeah, I think it is. But that's... A bit strong. It was a bit strong, wasn't it? Do you feel like she was experimenting or do you feel like she talks like that all the time? I wonder if some people just are a bit sweary. Yeah, which I think actually is worse because then it's kind of, once you've allowed that to happen, you're then inviting it for future lessons and you're saying, it's fine, I don't mind you swearing. And I don't mind a bit of swearing. But I think that's a bit much. Do you swear yourself, Em, while no. you're teaching? No. I would maybe once a year if, like, maybe the S word. What is the S word? Is that sugar? No. No, it's a bit stronger than that. But, I mean, that... Are you going to say it for us? No. We're a family-friendly we... podcast. Uh, have you already said it once this year? I have. I've, <laughs> I've had a quota. So I think it's okay occasionally, but I wouldn't want that every week. I wouldn't enjoy that, and I would be a bit like, hmm... Can we tone it down a bit, please? Tone it down. That's a nice expression. So use less swearing, be more polite. Yeah. How do you feel after that? I was absolutely gobsmacked. Yeah. So what did you say and what did you do and what was your reaction? And did you say... Mm. I said he sounds like a right... <laughs> did you really? No, not really. <laughs> but it did make me laugh. I laughed for quite a long time and then I think the student realised it was maybe not appropriate. <laughs> and then there was no more swearing after that point. I didn't need to raise the issue. And it was a one-to-one. If mm, it had mm. been a group lesson, then I might have said to the students, how do we feel about swearing in the class? Yeah, that's a good point. If there's other people to take into consideration, then we could do like a little them. grade thing and say, okay, let's start at the S word. We'll work our way all the way to the C word. <laughs> be that what's between? about it. Like, okay, we've got a line here, everyone. This is where we're going to go. <laughs> this is our threshold. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I would just say, as a rule, no, I wouldn't invite that in my lessons. I wouldn't want all my students swearing at each other. Well, I'm not sure they're swearing at each other, right, but they just, might say, I, I had a really sh- day. Yeah, but I wouldn't want the F-bomb going off all the time. I just wouldn't enjoy that environment, so I would probably stamp on it, to be honest. Oh. A little bit. Like, as you say, just look very shocked as like, oh, we don't usually use strong language. You must mm. be feeling very, very emotional today. Well, maybe you hang in different circles to me then, M, because the F-bomb is fairly common in people I know. Well, I think we're just demonstrating, aren't we, Gav, how people are different and some people don't mind and others do. On the topic of bosses, I have got a new... They're not a new group, but there's new students in the group and they're now a mix of very high-level people in the company, like the managers. And then there are secretaries and admin people in there too. And it's not bad, like the atmosphere is not bad. But it's getting a bit like the bosses are just doing all the talking and the subordinate people are sitting back and looking a bit bored. Oh, no. And I'm finding it a bit of a challenge as to whether I should just let them speak or give them more time. Em, I remember you told me that everybody deserves to yeah, be there. Yeah, They I should remember. speak equally. I remember. But that was before this group happened. Oh. And now I'm, I'm just not sure. So, again, what would Gav do? M's challenge of the week. 
Yeah, it is. I just stop them. If they're talking too much, I say, OK, let's talk about that in a second. I want to know what student B has to say about this thing. So you just don't acknowledge their status in the company? Of course even, not. Even though it's almost like everybody knows that's the dynamic and they're happy to let that person talk? Absolutely not. Even though the manager might lose face a bit in front of the others? I think they all need to be reminded that they're subordinate to me. <laughs> I'm the boss in the class. Yeah. And they are all equals in front of me. You don't want to embarrass them. I think sometimes it's so clear that they're just talking because they like the sound of their own voice and that's just what they're used to doing because they run meetings or they have to impress people. Mm. And they want to impress me, I suppose. I really struggle to interrupt people as well. That's the other problem. I think you should be super aware of how long each student's talking. A lot of time for each student equally, even if you have to interrupt a confident student, a shy student, whatever the situation is, you just have to interrupt them and say, OK, thank you. That's really interesting. I want to know what this person has to say or I want some input mm. from this, this mm. student. I know you're right. It's just very hard to do when you're actually in the moment. I should be able to just politely interrupt or not interrupt even, just guide, mm. guide the con- It's just hard. It's hard to include other people when they're so used to just sitting back and listening to the person talking yeah i understand but you need to change the atmosphere in there Mm. and show they're all equal you want input from all of them i think you're right i think i need to do more activities that include everyone talking or turn taking even something a bit more structured thanks gav that's what gav would do i've learned a lot of things this week from my students what have you learned this weekend I have learnt that the cutest animal in the world is a quokka. A quokka? Yeah, can you Google it? Q-U-O-K-K-A. Quokka, animal. Just look at that face. Oh, it's like a little beaver thing. Yep, and it's so cute. Oh, it's so happy. Yeah, it looks like it's smiling, doesn't it? Oh, it's so cute. And I've also learnt that in Italy you can have pistachios on pizza. Pistachio the nuts on pizza? Rather <laughs> pistachios, are there? What, nuts on pizzas? Yeah, nuts on pizza. Mm. It's a very popular trend right now. Are they sliced or ground? Actually, no, I think they said pistachio cream and nuts, which mm. sounds a bit like an ice cream, but you'd have to try it, I suppose. Your face isn't showing too no. much enthusiasm, but... I think you'd have to try it. Another thing I learned this week, Gav, Five Guys, the burger restaurant, Mm -hmm. does a bacon milkshake. Bacon? Bacon milkshake. Real bacon or bacon flavour? Bacon, bacon. Okay. Interesting, yeah? Kind of. And the last thing I'm going to share with you, Gav, is back to nature. Have you ever heard of a stink bug? A stink bug? No. I can guess why it's called a stink bug, because it's stinky. Yeah, only when you kill it, though, apparently. (laughs) Okay. Didn't know that. What's it look like? It's like a little beetle thing. It's got six legs. Looks a bit like a stick insect, actually. They're very common. I've seen them. I just didn't know they were called stink bugs. Ah, stink bug. Okay. You're Googling it, aren't you? I didn't even ask you. Pentatomidae. That's the one. Right. Family of insects belonging to the order Hemipidae. Terra. We don't need your Latin. Called shield bug or stink bug because it looks like it's got a little shield on its back. I've seen the these. One, the that's green, the one. Typically green. They're very cute. But yeah, stink bug, such a horrible name for such a cute little that insect. Is. Learn something new every day, Em. You can see my lessons have been mainly about nature and restaurants this week. And maybe where the two meet. No, they don't meet. I hope not. But yeah, a lot of, lot of nice anecdotes about food. Eating out, recommendations for restaurants. It's been lovely. Thanks to M students. Em, as you know, when we get to the end of the show, we do... Quiz, Quiz of, of the, the week. week. And this week I've prepared an absolutely delightful quiz for you, M. Delightful for me or delightful for you, Gav? Em, it's delightful for you, for me, and all of the followers who I hope are going to take part in today's Quiz of the Week. Righto, let's do it. Now, as you remember, in episode one, mm-hmm. we did a quiz all about the online different... Online stuff. ...equipment. Yes. An online teacher. Yes, needs. weird stuff, some of it. But it yeah. was a bit. There was a lot of um, lighting and... I remember the lights, yeah. Now, this time, 
I thought we should focus on the learner. So you're a language learner. What equipment do you need, Em? Right. And while I elicit from you, or perhaps you just tell me, I will then expand this quiz into a higher or lower quiz. Oh. Do you know the rules for higher or lower? You mean like if it's more important or less important? No, the price of it, Em, in British pounds. Huh? What do you mean? You're talking about the price is right, higher or lower? Yes. But what's higher or lower? I was in the value of it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Very right. good. You worked it out Do already. I say an object? It's all objects that you can buy in a shop then. Em, could you please explain the rules to us? Okay, so I'm going to say the things I think students need to learn English. One at a time. And then I have to decide whether the price is higher or lower than the thing I said previously. You've got it exactly. You can give me a precise figure if you like, but I do want to know whether the consecutive item which yep. the student might have yep. in order to learn English as a student is higher than the previous price or of the item and the price. <laughs> I think I already explained it. You don't need to mansplain <laughs> it back to me. That's oh, okay. Oh, that was a cheap shot. <laughs> I just can see this getting a bit messy, but let's try it. And what's your first item? A pen, Gav. A pen. Now, I have a brand new Graf von Faber-Castell. <laughs> yeah. The model number, just for your information, is 135536. No, that's very useful information. Mechanical, yeah. pencil, classic, mm. Makassar, lead, 0.7 millimetres, hardness B. Is this a standard pencil you could just go and buy in a shop? Yeah, of course. Sounds very fancy, but I'm going to say we're doing this in pounds. In pounds, yeah. I'm going to say £2.50 for that. £2.50 for a Graf von Faber-Castell mechanical pencil made of Maxar wood, 0.7 millimetre lead. The correct answer is £330.26. You didn't say it was made of wood, but OK. That's a nice pencil. That is a nice pencil. Quite expensive. I'm not sure every student needs that in order to learn English. But some will have that, I think. Can I add him? Yes. Maybe something I neglected to mention. It also has an eraser under the steel cap they at the top. They all have that. But you reckon it's steel? You don't think it's gold? No, it's, uh, it's definitely steel. 300 quid. I would hope for a gold-covered rubber end for that <laughs> price. <laughs> Em, let's can I let's have go you, to the next item. Can I have your second yes. item? I'm going to say a notebook, Gav. Notebook. And I'm talking a paper note block, some people call it, don't they? A block, lined paper, plain paper, whatever you want. Right. I have for you the Retassi A4 lined notebook. College rule slash thick journal, extra large, soft cover composition. It comes in green, black, blue, brown, cyan, grey blue, light blue, light green, mint, orange, pink, purple or red. It's the same price, whatever colour? Yes. Okay. And it's extra thick. So I have to tell you there are 320 pages. And what weights the paper? 120 grams. That is thick. Wow. Um, Standard papers are 80. It comes with two free sticky notes. This sounds more like a sketchbook. but It's faux um, leather and yeah. it's got um, a pocket. All right. <laughs> now, do you think this is higher or lower than the pencil? Lower. Lower. Okay. Are you going to guess at the price? What would you pay for one of these? Five pounds. It's 16 99 So congratulations. It is lower. Good. Very good. Okay, what's our next student? I think it was the faux leather that gave it away, to be honest. <laughs> okay, and what's the next item our student needs to learn English? An exercise book, some sort of student book. Student book. Let me have a look. I have got English file from Oxford. Oh, the beginner good old English student's file. book. New comes, one? Yeah, fourth edition, of course, comes with an online resource. Are we going higher or are we going lower than our notebook? which was 16.99. And I hope followers you're also taking part. I'm going to say higher Gav for this one. Mhm. Mm higher. Could you give me a price? 31.99. What? <laughs> Did you know that? I was looking at it the other day. I'm an English teacher. 
It's what I do. That is amazing. It is thirty one ninety nine, <laughs> and that doesn't even come with the answers, as far as I know. You really? need to get the uh, the answer book separately. Would you? Would you? Maybe you would. Self study. Mm. Well done, Em. You are doing very, very well. Now, what is our next item, and will it be higher or lower? Are we still thinking stationary at this point, or are we? Em, wherever you want to take it, you just go there. I'll come with you. Where's this list come from? My head. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Could be anywhere then. Um, let's think. You need a pencil or a pen. You need a notebook. You need a student book. You need furniture, but I don't know. No. And we're not going to ask our students to buy their own furniture. <laughs> Surely we could just sit down anywhere. You sit on the floor. It's free. Well, that's pretty much it, to be honest. What else do they need? Maybe an app? Yes. Okay, so for example, we might have Deep L, Translate Google, mm. Chat GPT. Mm. These are all translation apps that our students could use if they just don't know what the word is in their language. Now, higher or lower, M? Lower. Lower. Do you want to guess how low? I think they're free, aren't they? They are free. They're all completely free. And isn't that surprising? You could use ChatGPT to translate something. Yeah, I was going to comment on that. I didn't know you could do it. Very, very interesting. It is. Now, I'm a bit worried that you've bought a £330 pencil (laughs) and you've not put it anywhere safe. It's just hanging out your back pocket. Now, what's missing? Pencil case. A pencil case. Okay. (laughs) We have from Etsy a custom-made... A yeah. tailor made, a bespoke pencil case. Bespoke, tailor made, custom made pencil case. That you can have your own name written on. Oh. It has a nice little strap. Okay. Now, is this higher or lower than free? <laughs> I'm guessing it's higher. It is higher. Do you want to guess how much it costs? And this is handmade. Yes. One of a kind. Yes. Unique. Made of cotton or something or. Or something. Something. It's an artist piece, isn't it? You're like, you're basically, it's Etsy, so you're paying an artist. So, I mean, I would pay £40. Um, it's £6.64. No, pence. that is a bargain. It is a really good value for money item that you can put your very expensive pencil in. I do question the quality, but okay, great, £6. Now, um, where are you going to put your pencil case? In a bag, Gav. And will your bag be higher or lower? Would you like to hear the description My bag. first? I mean, I wouldn't pay a lot for a bag, but yeah, go on. Give me the bag you've chosen. Is this the bag you've chosen for me? Yes, this is the bag that you're going to put your pencil case in because you are a studious student. Okay. It's a printed pebble leather backpack from Gucci. <laughs> for my £300 pencil. It a £6 pencil case. <laughs> Higher or lower, em? here. Definitely higher. It is. Do you want to guess how much? I have no idea. Gucci. How many zeros? Three thousand pounds. No, it's a snip at one thousand one hundred and three pounds. Really? Well, that is a snip. That's not bad. What was it? Bubbled leather. Printed pebbled leather backpack. Pebbled. What? What's pebbled leather? I guess pebbled means lumpy. Yeah. <laughs> but lumpy doesn't sound very one thousand poundsy, does it? Doesn't. Does it? <laughs> Now, as you're working through your student book or in your notebook, you're going to want to focus in possibly a colourful way on some of the key words, some of the key language. Highlighter pens. Higher or lower, M. Your Stabilo... <laughs> Gucci bag. Your Stabilo <laughs> Boss original highlighter <laughs> individual colours listed, and there are many different colours, including orange, blue, yeah, yeah. red, etc. And they're not encrusted with Swarovski crystals or anything. They are not. How much for one of those? One highlighter pen. Is it more or less? Lower, Gav. Definitely lower. It is lower. Do you want to guess at how much it is? I'm going to say 80p. It's £2.20. Really? I haven't bought a highlighter for a long time. £2.20? Mm-hmm. Now, there are two things missing. Are there? Post-it notes. And are they higher or lower? We're talking about Canary Yellow Notes value pack pad of 100 sheets. This is 38 by 51 millimetres. They are recycled. So they're environmentally friendly, Mm. recyclable and biodegradable after use. Um, Planet friendly. Close. Very close. It's 16 plus 4 free. I'm going to say higher. 
higher than £2.20 for your Stabilo Boss Original Highlighters. Yeah, I'm going to say around the £3 mark. They are £10.50, M. I am really bad at this game. But you are getting the higher or lower spot on. I am. That's doing true. really well. That is true. Our last item, M. We must keep our students hydrated. Therefore, we need... A flask. A water... Water bottle? Water bottle. You're thinking a reusable water bottle made with ocean plastic, made in the UK, 600 millilitres. Is it higher or is it lower than our £10.15 post-its? Um, higher. Mm Mm-hmm, higher. And you're going to guess how much higher? I think those go for around £15. Em, you would be right because they do RRP at seventeen ninety nine. This is the recommended retail price. Yeah. But I would pick them up for £5.50 each. So I'm afraid it is lower. How would you? Because that's how much they're selling for online. Are they? Yeah. What a bargain. So no points at the end. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but you did very well throughout. And I'm sure... The followers did too. I wonder if any of the followers got all of those right, those higher and lower prices. There are a few traps in there. I mean, £10 is a lot for post-its. Maybe. But it was 16 packs plus four Did you say free. that? 16 yeah. packs. There were 100 sheets there, Em. I wasn't paying attention. So this, Gav, is an excellent listening task for your students. Make sure they're paying attention. There's a lot of information in there. You're practising prices, which is fantastic. Also comparatives, higher, lower. More expensive, less expensive. You could talk about all sorts of things on the way through that. There were so many different colours, for example, and then what's it made of? Yeah. For example, we had our pencil that was made of real wood. We did, and pebbled leather. We can have a whole chat about that. So quite fun, educational, great way of generating a lot of language. It was loads of fun. I really enjoyed that quiz. I hope we have just as much fun next time. I'm sure we will, Gav. Catch you later. Till then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.